Hey guys, this is the newest airplane by Eclipson. This is the Model A. We're going to show you guys how to assemble it. One of the best parts about building this airplane is this uses lightweight PLA to print it out. I was shocked the first time I pulled a lightweight PLA part off the build plate how awesome this was. It was so lightweight. This is a uh, lightweight PLA by ColorFab. It's a little bit more expensive, but well worth the money. Working with this lightweight PLA was very easy. I just used all the settings that Eclipsin has on their PDF file and I was able to print out all the parts without making any adjustments. Uh, and the print quality came out really, really nice. There was just no stringing inside the wing and it just turned out really, really good and the parts were really light. So I have all the parts laid out and all printed out. There's a few parts that you print in regular PLA, like all these pieces here, and there's one of the best things about this plane is it's really easy to assemble. There's very little like extra small parts you have to assemble. There's just your couple servo mounts, a spinner, and a couple other pieces. So it's pretty easy. Uh, you're gonna need two one millimeter rods. Uh, I use carbon rods here, but you can actually use just steel wire if you have that also. And that goes inside of this tail portion here. So you can see on this rear part, there are these little guide pieces that you need to glue in place. Uh, and that is because of just the way it prints out. There's not a way to get the little guide pieces to print. So we're just going to go ahead and glue those pieces in. And then we're ready to assemble the fuselage. So we'll first by, start out by putting these carbon rods into this tail portion. And we'll just add a little bit of glue uh, and add those in there. They don't have to be glued along the entire piece like as you're putting these uh, parts together. I just add a little dab of glue just before I slide it, uh, slide the parts together. Okay, and then we have the uh, nose piece glued on there, so the entire fuselage is all glued together and looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and add some uh, landing gear to it. Uh, so there's three different options you have. You have these foam tires and then these plastic tires that you can print out, or you can print out these TPU tires with a rim, and they have the uh, Eclipsum logo there in the center. And uh, we can use either one of those. I'm going to weigh them just to see what they are. We've got 5 grams, 7 grams, and 8 grams. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the foam ones just because they're lighter weight and using this lightweight PLA. I want to try to keep this as light as I can. So uh, now for the gear, there's a couple options. You have those little pieces there and then those uh, rear part here with the uh, hole for the wire. So you can actually set the gear up in like a Y configuration uh, so that if you're going to use regular PLA, uh, it'll be a little stronger and have a little bit more support for the landing gear. Uh, for this model, I'm just going to go ahead and use one two millimeter wire. Uh, and it's plenty strong enough uh, for this plane. So we'll just bend that 90 degree mark in there and then we'll insert that piece that goes into the fuselage. And then we'll go ahead and measure that out uh, five and a quarter inches and make a bend there for the uh, tire to sit on. I'm gonna add a little glue here where this 90 degree is at just to add a little strength to the gear. And then uh, there's arrows. Just make sure the arrows on these pieces uh, face forward and then just add the screws in. For the tail, we'll just uh, add a one millimeter wire, glue that in place and cut it to length. Okay, something I want to show you guys here is this is a horizontal stabilizer and it's labeled as HTP in your uh, STL files. And you can see there that it's seam located on the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer and it's one STL file. So if you just print two of them, you're going to have a 
you'll have a seam on the top on one side and on the bottom on the other side. So what I did is just mirrored the image uh, in Kira and then printed out two separate ones, like a left and a right. Uh, and then once you uh, have those all printed out and cut the brim off of there uh, and just use a little sandpaper to clean those up, we'll go ahead and just glue those right into the tail portion. And we'll also glue the vertical stabilizer in place. Okay, now I'll start adding some servos. So we will drill these holes out just a little bit in the control arm just to fit these connectors in place. And then we'll put the nut on there, put a little bit of the CA glue, and then spray that with the accelerator. And I'll just keep the uh, nut in place. And then we'll add the servo mounts that go to the fuselage. And these are nine gram servos uh, with plastic gears, so they're nice and light. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add a little CA glue to that mount there and then just add it right into the fuselage. For the push rods, we're going to use 1.2 millimeter wire. We'll add a Z bend to one end, and then we'll just slide those right into the channels in the fuselage and connect it on the servo. For the control surfaces, we're going to use 3M duct tape. Uh, you can get this in any color, and uh, works pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and just cut this to about one inch wide and cut it to length. We'll add a little bit of CA glue to the control surfaces, add the duct tape, and then we'll repeat the process uh, on the other, on the vertical stabilizer and the horizontal. This is another cool thing that Eclipsen does. Uh, they use these metal rods to align all these control surfaces. So you don't actually leave this in place. Uh, you just use it as a guide to glue these parts together and then we'll remove the wire. So we'll just add a one millimeter wire in there, add a little bit of CA glue, set the two parts together, and then I'll actually pull the push rod out a little bit uh, and then glue the next portion and then we'll take that all the way once we have the whole piece glued. And then there it is, it's all nice and glued together and it's all straight and lined up. And then we'll just go ahead and add the tape again. Make sure there's a little bit of a gap between your control surface and the vertical and the horizontal stabilizer. Uh, that'll just allow it to move a lot easier. And then we'll test out the controls. Okay, next we're gonna add these hooks in place on the fuselage that hold the wing in place. Make sure that you add glue uh, to these pieces before you screw them onto the fuselage because they are holding the entire weight of the airplane up so you want to make sure they're nice and secure to the fuselage. Okay now we'll go ahead and uh, start adding the motor and the prop. So we're going to use a 980 kV motor. I'll have all the links to all the parts I use in the description below so you guys can click them and uh, go out and purchase everything. Uh, one thing that you'll see uh, is the motor mount that it comes with it has a mo metal motor mount with these screws uh, that have a little bevel to them and everything. Uh, they don't, they're not quite long enough, so we're going to have to go out and get some 3mm by, I think these are 3 by 8 millimeter screws. Uh, and then you can add the uh, motor in place onto the uh, motor mount. Okay, and then to hold that canopy on there, we're just going to make a little hook to uh, hook that on there. It's like 0.5 millimeter, just some wire, and uh, just go ahead and bend that into a hook. You can also use like body clips for like your RC cars and stuff like that. Uh, I got just some small ones of those that fit on there too, uh, but this little wire works pretty good. Okay, now we'll set the fuselage aside and we'll start working on the wing. So the wing looks pretty good. All the parts are printed out. And so for this first part, we're going to work on the center section. does not have any tabs, just like the rear part of the fuselage. So we're going to go ahead and just add these little guide pieces in place. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add four of them in place and just make sure to wipe any excess glue off there so the pieces fit together nicely.
Okay, well the wing's looking pretty good. We got this uh, all assembled. And now let's start working on the control surfaces. So again, just like the uh, elevator, this is the same way with the flap around. Just add that metal wire in place. Add a little bit of glue. Don't put any of it on the metal wire so that way you can remove it. Once you get these uh, parts lined up, and then we'll just take that wire right out. And for the flap rounds, we're going to use just 9 gram servos again. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and add those to the servo mounts. And then we'll just plug it into the receiver, make sure that the servos are centered, and then we'll add those control horns. For hooking these servos up to the control services, I just end up using uh, z bend pliers on both ends of the wire just to save a little bit of weight and not having that connector on there. And uh, it's just a short piece of wire there, so it's really easy to get the length right. Just you know, mark with a marker and get the length right. Uh, to add all the other electronics into the fuselage, we're just going to use a piece of Velcro. So we'll just put a little bit of Velcro on that receiver, and we'll put a little Velcro on this ESC and plug it into the motor and add it in the side of the fuselage. And then we'll just tidy up all the wiring by just, uh, I had a little bit of extension there with the correct battery connector, zip tied up those wires for the servos. Uh, I actually was able to plug in the wing servos into the right end of the receiver where the receiver is located uh, without any extensions, which is a good way to save a little bit more weight. Uh, if you want to make it a little easier, you could probably add a little bit of an extension on there, but you don't need it. Uh, and then to hook the wing on there, we just use two rubber bands. Uh, these are pretty thick rubber bands, just uh, one for each side that works just fine. But if you're using smaller ones, you might want to add a couple more. Okay, now we'll set the CG with the battery. So I'm going to use a 3-cell 1,000 milliamp battery. Uh, I'm just going to get that thing set right where I want it. And then we'll put a little blue tape on there and mark where I kind of want to set that Velcro at. And then we'll just set that Velcro right in place uh, at the bottom of the fuselage. And then the CG will be set. I brought it out to fly. I had a couple batteries. I had this 1,000 milliamp 3 cell and then also brought a 450 milliamp 3 cell. Uh, I actually flew better with the smaller battery just because it's so lightweight and so it was able to fly a little slower. Uh, we're going to throw it on the scale with this uh, larger battery. It's a 91 gram battery uh, and then with the airplane ready to fly away, we're at 528, which is really awesome for a 3D printed airplane. Uh, and then I was able to save about 25 grams using a smaller battery on it. Uh, with this larger battery, uh, you know, you're going to have like 10 minute or more flight time. So if you want to, you know, like five minute, six minute flight time, this a 450 or 500 milliamp battery uh, works good and it flies a little better and slower with the smaller battery. I'll go ahead and add some uh, decals and make this plane look really awesome. Uh, we're going to go out and take this thing out for a flight. Uh, make sure to check out my next video. I'm going to have a, a full flight video uh, and review and uh, show you guys all the different batteries I used and uh, talk about how this plane flies a lot more. Uh, this is just a build video for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like these kind of videos, check out my YouTube channel. I have some other build videos for other 3D printed airplanes. I got some foam planes and some boss planes. Just check all that stuff out. It really helps me out when you guys watch my videos. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.